Your monthly subscription box from PostFlyBox.com includes all the materials needed to tie a dozen flies, along with some extra goodies. The ghost is a baitfish pattern that gives the illusion of size. It looks big in profile without a whole lot of material, and it sheds water easily, so it casts quite well. The foundation of the ghost is a sturdy size 2 forged hook. Begin by getting the hook firmly secured in the jaws of your tying vise. A rotary vise makes tying this pattern a bit easier, but it's by no means required. For thread, load a bobbin with a spool of white unithread. Get the thread started on the hook shank behind the eye and take a few wraps rearward before snipping off the excess tag. Continue taking thread wraps rearward to about one third of the way down the hook shank. Bright red yarn is used to represent gills. Snip one end of the yarn off square, then place that snipped end on top of the hook shank and take wraps of tying thread to secure it. Continue taking wraps to anchor the yarn to the top of the shank all the way back to the hook point then return your thread to where you started. Snip the yarn off so it ends at about the hook barb. Cut a full length small clump of green mirror image material free from the hank. Locate the midpoint of the clump and place it on top of the hook shank above your tying thread. Take nice tight wraps of tying thread rearward to firmly anchor the material all the way back to the hook point. Then pull the forward pointing portion of the material back over top of what you just bound down and take thread wraps forward to secure it there. Flip the fly over in the jaws of your tying vise or use its rotary feature so its underside is facing up. Snip the same amount of white mirror image material free from the hank as you did with the green. You can then find its midpoint and secure it to the underside of the hook in the same manner you did the green. But this time, try to get equal amounts of material on either side of the hook. Once everything's in place, take a few more tight wraps to further secure it. Go back again to the white mirror image material and snip free another clump, the same size as the last. But this time, fold the material in half and cut it at its midpoint you should be left with two equal sized clumps. Set one of these aside, then locate the midpoint of the other. Place this midpoint on top of your tying thread and secure it in the same way as the previous clumps. Here again, try to get an equal amount of material on either side of the hook. Now, flip the fly back to its normal orientation. Go back to the green mirror image material and snip another full length small clump free. As you did with the white material, fold it in half, then cut its midpoint to form two equal lengths. Set one aside and find the midpoint of the other. This time, place the midpoint on top of the hook shank and secure it in the same manner as you did all the previous clumps. End with your tying thread immediately in front of all the material that's been tied in thus far. Tease a small amount of blue UV angel hair free from the packet. Pull the material apart a couple of times to get the fibers aligned in the same direction. Then snip the short end of the material off square. Place the snipped off end against the near side of the hook over top of the previously tied in material and take a few thread wraps to secure it. It's intended to look like the lateral line of a bait fish. Repeat the procedure of aligning, trimming, and securing the angel hair to the far side of the hook. The material is rather slippery, so make sure it's bound down really well. Once again, end with your tying thread in front of all the tied in material. With the hook in the inverted position, retrieve the remaining clump of white mirror image material and again secure its midpoint to the hook shank. Continue taking thread wraps to bind the forward pointing material down all the way to the back edge of the hook eye. Then pull that material rearward as you've done before and bind it down. Again, try to get equal amounts on either side of the hook. When you're done, flip the fly back around to its normal position. Get hold of the remaining green clump of material and secure it to the top side of the hook using the same procedure as you've been doing. Take multiple thread wraps to make sure everything's bound down really well, then create a thread ramp to ease the transition from the material down to the hook shank. It should look something about like this. 
It's a good idea to pick up your whip finish tool and complete a five or six turn whip finish to in effect save your work up till this point. Snip a two inch length of monofilament fishing line free from the coil. This will be used to create a weed guard for the fly. With one end pointed down below the hook point, anchor the material to the near side of the hook with angled thread wraps, then pull the line on the far side of the hook down and anchor it with thread wraps as well. You want to get both ends pointed down to the hook point at about the same angle. Continue taking thread wraps to ensure the mono is secured. Once again, pick up your whip finish tool, but this time do a final whip finish at the head of the fly. Then seat the knot well and snip or cut your tying thread free. Reach in with your tying scissors and snip the two weed guards off so they end just past the point of the hook. Using super glue or here UV cure resin, place a drop where all the materials intersect on the near side of the hook. Peel one of the plastic eyes free from the sheet and place it onto the adhesive. If you're using UV cure resin, pick up the UV torch and give the backside of the fly a healthy dose of UV light to cure the resin. You want to make sure the eye is fairly well secured. Once done, you can repeat the procedure with a second eye on the far side of the hook. Ideally, the eyes should be aligned front and back, top and bottom. To increase the fly's durability and ensure the eyes don't come off, apply an ample coat of UV resin or head cement to the area between the eyes and the whole head of the fly. A fine-tipped bodkin works well for distributing the adhesive. If you're using UV cure resin, give the whole area a shot of UV light to cure it. Now the fun part. Using long bladed scissors, trim the ghost to shape. Think Christmas tree as you do this, but resist the temptation to over trim. A black permanent marker and a chip clip are used to add some natural looking coloration to the pattern. Place the chip clip over the fly, like so. Then pick up the permanent marker and using the edge of the clip as a guide, produce light vertical marks on either side of the fly. Pull down on the clip to expose another half inch of material and mark in the same manner there. Continue making marks down the remainder of the fly. Four or five usually looks pretty good. Although the ghost might seem a little scary to tie at first, have no fear. There's really nothing in the tying sequence that's all that difficult.